Hello, dear friends. I want to introduce to you our project of virtual tours. I work in a Gerolita travel company and we are developing at the moment two YouTube channels. One Gerolita travel and another one Travi for Hebrew speaking audience. So we will uh, take you into the highs and lows of the Jewish history of Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Belarus and maybe some other European countries as well. Uh, we will go to shtetls, to little towns where Jewish population was sufficient. We want to undust Jewish heritage sites as much as possible and to show them in a virtual way to people who are far away from Lithuania and have interest in this interesting country. Kedainia, this is the name of the city in, in Lithuanian language. The same city in Polish is called Kedani, in Yiddish Kedan, in German Kedanen. All these names they say speak about the variety of the languages that local people spoke here. So we are lucky to have a sunny day in September and we are visiting town of Kedania today. So you can see the panoramic view of the old city. Kedania is located in the very center of Lithuania. It was always a mountain national uh, town with the different nationalities, different religious confessions uh, and uh, it still preserves and keeps its heritage in a very nice way. We are going to visit the multicultural center, we'll be on the old market square, we'll be on the new market square, we'll be on the Jewish street, we'll see the old Jewish cemetery and we'll finish our tour visit, paying tribute to the victims of the Holocaust in the massacre field outside Kedaini. St. George Church is built on the hill overlooking Kedaini. It was first mentioned in the late 1400s. It was a wooden church, then it was rebuilt into a stone structure, red brick to be precise, Baltic Gothic uh, with the very high windows, massive walls with buttresses to support the walls from collapsing. In the 1500s there was a religious war and Kedaini became a rare place in Lithuania where Protestants uh, had strong positions and this was a Protestant church Later on it was uh, given back to the Catholic Church. Today it's a Catholic Church. We have very uh, small Protestant community. So there is a Protestant Church we will, which we will see later in Kedaini. Now on this location there was the beginning of the estate of um, noble family Rodzivil who owned the whole town of Kedaini. The uh, Rodzivil Palace uh, of Kedaini didn't survive. Uh, but uh, the church was built at the edge of the estate from which they could oversee the whole town and the peasants and the craftsmen who worked for this noble family. So on the left bank of Nevejis river we are in the area of the old city of Kedaini and uh, these cobblestones they mark the place where was the defensive wall. One of the borders of the town was Nevejis River here. Here was the town wall to defend the citizens from numerous knights who wanted to attack these places. Armies of different countries passed back and forth as Lithuania is on the crossroad between east and west. Kedaini was uh, mentioned about 700 years ago uh, in the 14th century, in the 15th century, it became a little bit more important town and um, uh, there were close to uh, 190 houses uh, by the end of the 1400s. Uh, in the late 1500s it got rights of the town, uh, so-called Magdeburg rights, the self-government uh, uh, rights, uh, by the law of medieval Europe uh, and the, the importance here belongs to noble family Radzivil who owned the lands of uh, Kedaini and, uh, and the neighboring lands as well uh, since the 1500s throughout the late medieval ages uh, in Lithuania. 
Kidani uh, met the first Jews in uh, early 1500s when uh, the local duke uh, granted them uh, rights to settle here to occupy with the uh, different crafts uh, and all kinds of occupations and also to uh, collect uh, taxes. So the Jewish community of Kedaini was growing and they lived predominantly in the old city and uh, later on also in some other places. At its peak, Jewish community here reached about 60% uh, of the population of the town. From Cheslov Milos Street, on which we were a few seconds ago, we jump to the courtyard of two synagogues, the Great Synagogue and the New Synagogue. This was built in the late 1700s and this was built in the early 1800s. And here was a mikve and here was a little uh, wall uh, to guard this place, to protect this place. Why two synagogues at the same place? One, the Great Synagogue or the Old Synagogue, was uh, first built. It was built on the place of the former wooden uh, synagogue and uh, the community grew. As I told you, in 1500s there were less than 200 Jewish homes in Kedaini. In 1700s there were already over 300 Jewish homes uh, and uh, the population was growing. Jews found Kedaini attractive. They used to come here to trade on the old market square here cobblestones, authentic, maybe restored, but still authentic. And in the very center where now cars are parked, here was a well, the community well, water, uh, important source, of course. So all this commerce and trades and selling and buying and, and, and laughing and joking and bargaining and uh, whatever, all was here on that market square. In the 1800s, all the shops which were around this square belonged to the Jews of Kedaini. The Great Synagogue was built as a fortress. You see relatively small windows, high from the ground. It was built in 1700s after Khmelnytsky riots when Jews were afraid of pogroms. This synagogue was built later in the 1800s and it's more modern synagogue. So you see the division into one third and two thirds of a building. Two thirds reminds of the old synagogue building. One third has two floors. It's, it's an annex for a women's section, Ezrat Nashim, on the second floor. A nice balcony, we'll see it from inside later on. So uh, Khmelnytsky riots, if I've already mentioned them, uh, they didn't reach Lithuanian territory, but there were a lot of refugees from Khmelnytsky riots who came here and got support from local communities, including Kedan community. Kedan community was central and big Jewish community. Uh, it was very important in the period of autonomy. Autonomy requires a separate episode, we'll speak about that in detail, but briefly, Jews had almost a state within a state from the middle of, uh, from the early 1600s for almost 150 years. And this is the entrance to the small synagogue or a new synagogue, which today is a multicultural center. Hello, Odronia. So nice to see you again. I'm also very glad to meet. Please come in and shalom. You are always welcome and you are our favorite guests. Thank you. As usual, it is very nice here. All the time we have some kind of activities here. Exhibitions, concerts, guests coming, both from afar and locals. It is already 18 years since the so-called small synagogue that goes back to 1837 was restored. And here, since 2002, the multicultural center of Kedaini has been opened and now operates. Every month we change a new exhibition in the Great Hall of the former synagogue. We arrange art exhibitions, photography, handicrafts, students' works and many more. Today we have an exhibition of our local painting lovers. Since there is enough space, we also host musical evenings in this hall. So where was the stage for the musician? It is here, where the piano stands. 
famous musicians such as Arkady Gottesman from Vilnius or Slava Ginelen from Israel visit us. Some year we had a series of chamber music concerts here. Choirs also appear here. Our visitors love these events very much. In a word, we have constant cultural activities at our center. From the very beginning, we reasoned like this. The synagogue is a place for gatherings, right? So we will gather here to listen to good music, enjoy artworks and learn something new. The visitors learn here about the Jewish history, everyday life, Jewish culture, traditions and about the terrible Holocaust period. When we started renovating the building, we thought of restoring the authentic synagogue space. Unfortunately, we had no evidence of what the Torah Ark of the synagogue would have looked like. But we found pictures from the great synagogue that is next door. Then we decided to place a photograph of its holy ark here as the symbol of the shul. When sometimes religious Jewish visitors come to Kedan, they pray here in front of this picture. We are also happy that conferences and seminars for teachers and students for various public organizations on tolerance, culture, education and science are occasionally held at our center. Our center is really needed. It is a multicultural, so we are talking here not only about the Jews, but also about other nations, about different cultures. After all, Kedani is a city of culture. People from the local Russian community, the Polish community and others gather here. We seek to cultivate in people, especially the young people, feelings of goodness and tolerance towards other nations. Now, the runner, we came to the women's section, right? And we can imagine that some 150 years ago, the Jewish women prayed here and could see the Torah Ark and hear the prayer in the main hall. So, this is a traditional Lithuanian synagogue with women's section on the second floor. Everything closed, small windows. Right, a real classic synagogue. It was not so rich decorated as the great synagogue next to us. The synagogue was used more for everyday needs. For example, here on the second floor there was a separate room where the Jewish court of the community operated. In the Shulhoif, the courtyard of the synagogues, there was one more building, the slaughterer's house, and it had special premises that served for imprisonment and the lawbreakers were held there. Many tourists, groups and individuals visit Kedani and our center. Of course, not only Jewish. We arranged an exhibition here in the form of a pillar and on all the sides of it are presented pictures of various aspects of the Jewish life in Kedani. On one side, the pictures of the Jewish life from before the war, which we found in our archives or that were sent to us by Jews from around the world. On the other side, there are photos from the war period and after the war. Here, for example, are pictures of the summer of 1941 from the ghetto and from the extermination place or abandoned Jewish houses and so on. Here is our small modest library and the space where we arrange talks, discussions and educational classes on different issues. Of what age are your visitors? They are of different ages, but mostly we work more with high school students, because on serious and sometimes difficult issues we must talk to the older children. But with the pupils of the 5th or 6th grades, for example, we talk more about the Jewish customs and traditions. Audrone, I want to clarify once more. These are Lithuanian school children, right? Yes, exactly. There are no others in Kedaini. The history curriculum in Lithuanian schools includes chapters on different national communities, such as Polish, Russian, Tatar, and of course, history of the Jewish community in Lithuania. Does it include the Holocaust period? Yes, of course, in the upper grades. The children are often brought here to the synagogue, to our multicultural center, all will be shown and explained in a more imaginative and interesting way. Aldrone, you are also a history teacher, aren't you? 
Yes, I am a history teacher, so I know well enough how to adapt the material for the pupils of different ages. As far as I know, you are teaching in another place. I am teaching in a little town of Sheta, not far from here. I teach in the same school that I myself graduated from. The school there, by the way, is located next door to the former synagogue that is abandoned now. But we covered the empty synagogue windows with photographs of the Jewish life from before the war. Now let's speak about the Jewish values we have here. As we say, we have to know not only how many Jews were perished, but also who they were. What was their religion? What were their habits and traditions? And this is an example of the lesson I teach both children and adults about the shtetl and Jewish traditions. Among the essential things is the Saturday night, which is quite different from the Christian tradition of Sunday. So one can see here the main things for Shabbat. Candles, which a Jewish woman should light. A cup for hand washing, which everyone loves to hold in his hands. A silver kiddush cup. And of course the kippah that everyone wants to wear and to learn why should the head be covered when entering the synagogue. Or what is the meaning of talit? Because sometimes they see the Jews with talit in the movies. Or for example, what for are these spice boxes? Audrona, can I ask you a perhaps hard question? Yes, sure. Do you meet sometimes people who claim that the matzahs contain Christian blood? Yes, sometimes it happens. But more from the older people. Children don't know and don't believe such things. And I'm happy about that. Audrona, we appreciate highly your contribution to the education, especially of the young people. Thank you very much for your hospitality, for the interesting story, for all you and your colleagues are doing here at the Multicultural Center of Kedaina.